Welcome to HP Tuner's Ford Mod Motor Training Part 15. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with our speed density operation and calibration techniques. Now the speed density is going to be used as a redundancy in the airflow model calculations. We're primarily a mass airflow driven model, but it does have speed density influences. So if we've tuned our mass airflow curve out, we've turned all the things that we've disabled to isolate our MAF curve, we've turned them all back on, and we're finding that we have load represented incorrectly and we have our fuel being off, we need to deal with it in the speed density. We need to go in and correct some things. So I'm gonna show you what you need to change and how to go and change them properly based on log data from our VCM scanner in a histogram format. We have a lot to cover, so let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our speed density style tuning within our Ford PCMs. Now, I do wanna mention before we begin this video that the Ford PCMs are 80 to 90% mass airflow based, so a primarily mass airflow based. We're going to find that they are speed density referenced just like a GM PCM is going to be. In this case, we don't actually have a MAP sensor present on a three valve GT application or a GT500. Ford decided to go and infer or calculate what the MAP pressure is going to be based on some theoretical values and math modeling going on in the background. So what we're going to be covering in this video will be pertinent to understanding how to tune speed density tuning, but in a lot of cases, we don't have to do a lot of adjustments into the speed density calculations as long as we performed a solid mass airflow calibration process and dialed in our load with failed MAP tables if we're on a three valve application. But I still want to cover speed density tuning so you understand what is going on and how it works because it is integrated within the Ford PCMs and it can start to skew our load registration and our airflow modeling and ultimately our fuel delivery if we don't have it right, if something's way, way off. This is usually only needed to be touched in a force induction application. Naturally aspirate it, we rarely if ever have to touch this. Let's go in and take a look at a calibration file so we can start, start to discuss what is going on with our speed density operation. So what I'm gonna do here is go to file open and then I'm gonna move down in our calibration file examples to our 2005 Mustang GT 4.6 liter and slick open. Now, what we're gonna do from here is jump into engine and then from engine here under general, we're gonna to move to airflow and then we find under airflow, we have general and then we have speed density. So speed density is what we're gonna be discussing in this video here. Again, we've discussed pretty heavily now our mass, mass airflow calibration curve and all of the associated uh, toggle switches and tables here that we have to deal with. Again, I do want to note that the Ford PCMs are 80 to 90 percent mass airflow based, but they do have influence from our speed density calculations going on in the background, and we do not have a MAP sensor present to actually go in and measure the true MAP pressure or the true vacuum or manifold pressure coming from a MAP sensor. We're going to be calculating it. We can find right up at the top here under MAP, we see MAP sensor is showing the disabled status. You're not able to add a MAP sensor into a three valve or a GT500, so you can't just simply toggle on or enable option to turn on a MAP sensor to actually wire one in. There isn't one present, so we can't actually do that. Again, Ford chose to save 10 or $15 per car by not putting a MAP sensor on and then calculating what that MAP pressure would be based on a whole bunch of background math variables. So in order to deal with the speed density, we have to tune our mass airflow curve with our adaption off, with our cylinder filter off, with our anticipation off. Once we do that, once we deal with our MAF curve, then we tune our load with failed MAF tables. Once those are dialed in, we turn our adaption, our filter, and our anticipation off. And once we start to enable these, we start to inter introduce our speed density calculations are going on in the background. Now, if you're GT500, you don't have load with failed MAF tables, so you'll find that you're just dealing with your mass airflow curve and then you have some influence from your speed density operation. But we need to make sure that all of these are on in order to use speed density in our, in our calculations and start to review this. So let's actually jump here into our speed density tab and we're gonna be specifically dealing with our general area here. We're not gonna be covering and talking about dynamic airflow. This is going to be part of our transient or acceleration fuel enrichment values that are going under PCM calculations. Even though it is under speed density, we are gonna be ignoring that because it doesn't necessarily belong in this category. So looking at our tables here, we're gonna find at the top, we have some correction tables. We also have another correction table here in the middle. Um, and then down below, we have some parameters that we have to go and adjust. Now, if you're naturally aspirated, you don't need to touch these. You can keep your calculated MAP max alone. Our max air charge load could be left alone as well. If you're force induction, we're gonna have to raise these up. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. Now, again, naturally aspirated, chances are all of your tables here, 
for your speed density modeling. So it's gonna be simulating what the map sensor would read. There isn't actually no map sensor reading vacuum or pressure, it's simulation of that. Um, we'll find that naturally aspirated. We generally do not have to edit this. Only time I've seen that I have to go and edit this is when I'm a force induction application. I've dialed in my math curve. I know that is 100%. I enabled all of my filters, anticipations, and adaption. And I notice as I'm starting to run my engine and boost and do a check that my load changes, my load usually drops, and we'll find that my fuel leans out um, and everything's skewed. And then we can test it by, again, turning these off again, doing a pull with the math enabled only, and then verifying that um, it's not something else creating the problem. But if we're finding that situation that our load representation is way off and or our fuel delivery is way off from when we ran it on mass airflow alone, that's when we need to jump into our speed density here and do some corrections and calculations and fix some things. So let's go through our tables here. We're going to talk about the various tables we have to deal with and then talk about what we need to do to actually tune this out. We're going to be working with and integrating into our Excel spreadsheet in our speed density. I have speed, speed density tuning calculator here. It's going to help us visualize what's going on. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.